Greetings. I'm Michael Quinn Patton, here to award a gold medal for evaluation excellence inspired by the 2022 Beijing Olympics, which are going on as I speak. The Olympics have many different events, many different categories. Our category today is a special category within developmental evaluation called retrospective developmental evaluation. But the overarching principles of developmental evaluation also apply to this special category. And so what we'll be doing is looking at those eight principles as criteria for judging the quality and excellence of a developmental evaluation. In this case, a retrospective developmental evaluation. Retrospective developmental evaluations look backwards to see what the developmental trajectories have been up to a current and new baseline. Learning lessons, extracting understandings and insights to inform future developments. And so the eight principles of developmental evaluation are a clear developmental purpose, manifesting evaluation rigor, being utilization focused, occupying an innovation and adaptation niche, bringing a complexity perspective and systems thinking to bear, co-creation between the evaluator and those engaged in the initiative, and timely feedback. So let's look at the award recipient and how their work manifests these criteria. And the 2020 Retrospective Developmental Evaluation Gold Medal, in my judgment, goes to the World Food Program, Office of Evaluation, and the Contera Group that conducted the evaluation. So let me take you through, as a way of learning and about these criteria and principles, how this evaluation stacked up. The World Food Program was awarded the Nobel Prize in 2020 for its efforts to combat hunger, for its contributions to bettering conditions for peace in conflict-affected areas, and for acting as a driving force in efforts to prevent the use of hunger as a weapon of war and conflict. But in the last five years, and especially in the last two years, there has been a substantial increase in the number of people suffering hunger chronically, suffering from malnutrition because of the pandemic. Some 700 million people are hungry in the world. That's 9% roughly of the world's population with an increase of more than a million people in the last two years, a trend that had begun even before the pandemic. And so the world is hugely dependent upon the effectiveness of the World Food Program for helping to deal with global hunger. And a retrospective developmental evaluation of the response to COVID-19 was aimed at helping improve that response. That evaluation report just came out as the Olympics got underway. And so let's look at how the evaluation meets the criteria expressed by the principles of developmental evaluation. A set of interconnected principles that we'll look at one by one and then their overall integration. First is developmental purpose. The World Food Program evaluation covered the period from February 2020 to June 2021 and ask three questions, all aim to explore the adaptive capacity of WFP under pandemic conditions. How well did the enabling environment and organizational assets of WFP adapt to respond to the demands of the COVID-19 crisis? How well did WFP fulfill its role as a partner in the collective humanitarian response? What was achieved and what was learned? The retrospective developmental evaluation adopted a retrospective developmental design which focused on providing evidence to support adaptation in dynamic environments. 
This involved the application of three principles, prioritizing organizational learning needs, ensuring consultation and evidence sharing with stakeholders throughout, and integrating with the surrounding evidence building environment. I had the opportunity to advise the retrospective developmental evaluation, which is how I know about it uh, in some depth, but I had no engagement in the actual operational work or the final publication. The developmental trajectories involved looking backwards across time up to the present to see how things developed. And the report tracks a number of developmental trajectories, both the World Food Program response and the larger international response to the pandemic. The developmental trajectories are documented in care and detail about how WFP was affected by the changes in the pandemic trajectories itself. Evaluation rigor involves attending to both accuracy and use for evaluation impact. This evaluation produced detailed evidence summaries in 10 categories of WFP operations. And each of those evidence summaries were engaged in and inquired into by a dedicated team of evaluators looking at quantitative and qualitative evidence, both within WFP and outside, to examine in great detail these responses within these strategic areas to the pandemic and tracking how those responses adapted and changed within those categories across time. The report you'll find is balanced, reporting both the things that were going well and the things that weren't going so well, looking at what was hopeful and what was not so hopeful as the pandemic unfolded. The third criterion is being utilization focused. And this criterion is still unfolding as there are plans to present the results to senior managers for engagement and to the board of the WFP. And a part of this being utilization focused is the very transparency involved in making this report public. I find that many developmental evaluations are treated entirely as external, as internal documents and are never published. This sets a high bar for sharing the results of a developmental evaluation so that we all can learn both from the methodology and from the substantive findings. The primary intended users of the evaluation are clearly identified and engaged around the importance of this retrospective developmental evaluation. The fourth criterion is occupying an innovation and adaptation niche. And the evaluation itself was innovative. It came up with a framework to examine WFP's responses to the pandemic by looking at what things were maintained, system capacities that stayed the same, what capacities were expanded, what pivots were involved, and what things were new and innovative. This institutional change framework, innovative and creative, can inform any kind of developmental evaluation. And within those different categories, detailed evidence and insights are generated in the report. The fifth criteria is bringing a complexity perspective to bear. And indeed, the graphics and the description of the pandemic response by WFP brings complexity and uncertainty criteria into the fore and discusses the turbulence of that environment even as WFP was responding to it and the ambiguities and challenges of working under conditions of complexity and uncertainty. And as that unfolds, the system's perspective is brought to bear in each of the arenas and aspects of WFP where the evaluation 
was examining the responses and adaptation. Zooming in for the big picture of what was going on in humanitarian response internationally, zooming in to what WFP was doing, zooming out for that big picture, and connecting the two together from a systems perspective. The systems thinking showed how the various aspects of what WFP was doing subsystems as a part of the larger WFP system, as a part of the larger international humanitarian system, created a way to make sense of and track what was happening both within WFP and in the larger world. Co-creation, evaluators working together with program people and agency people. This was an exemplary partnership between WFP, the Office of Evaluation, and the Contera group. And in fact, as the evaluation was concluding, we worked together on a panel that included Julia Betts, who headed the evaluation team for Contera, Deborah McWinney, who was the senior evaluation officer from WFP, Andrea Cook, who provided overall leadership for this effort from the WFP Office of Evaluation, uh, myself as uh, providing some, some overview of developmental evaluation, and Valerie Carew Jones, who is also involved in a UNFPA eva developmental evaluation, looking at how developmental evaluation provides real time decision making. An example of this was the emergence in early in the evaluation of finding that the people being interviewed in the field were experiencing considerable trauma. Many of these people had been in the middle of what they thought were short-term assignments in difficult situations in countries uh, experiencing hunger insecurity. And when the pandemic hit, suddenly finding themselves quarantined, locked down, unable to return to their families and communities, and short-term engagements turning into long-term engagements. The evaluation team stopped, regrouped, did training on trauma-informed interviewing, shared these early findings with WFP about the, the severity of the trauma that some field staff were experiencing. That's an example of early, real-time, important feedback. The report concludes with overall lessons about the response, insights into the response, and items for future consideration in the baseline from now into the present. Areas where progress is needed, areas where progress is happening, areas of excellence to continue forward. And so this is an evaluation that integrated the eight developmental evaluation principles into a holistic perspective on how the World Food Program had responded to the pandemic. And I am delighted to award my 2022 Retrospective Developmental Evaluation Gold Medal to the Office of Evaluation of the World Food Program and the Contera Group. And I hope that you will take seriously and consider the eight principles of developmental evaluation as criteria of excellence both for retrospective developmental evaluations and for ongoing real-time developmental evaluations. I'm Michael Quinn Patton, and I'm delighted to share with you these reflections on retrospective developmental evaluation.